Hello everyone and welcome to my fall front porch makeover. I went yesterday up to my local pumpkin patch up at Bricks just several blocks away from my house and I, I just went kind of pumpkin crazy. Maybe not as much as I normally do. Nevertheless, I came home with quite a few gourds. And here's my question of the day. I call it pumpkinizing. So to me, pumpkin, to pumpkin, pumpkinizing, those are all verbs. They're not just nouns. So I've spent quite a bit of time in the past few days pumpkinizing my front porch and working on some projects in the back. So I guess I should say basically I'm doing fall prep now. It's about the end of September. Pumpkins and gourds are available and it's finally cooled down enough in the morning and at night so that it feels fallish enough to proceed. So number one, I started out, you guys saw this in a previous video where I have my Together Weather Terrain um, Iron Floral Wreath. And then I just have pumpkinized a lot all over the front porch. So let me start here with this little tip. So I've got one of these knucklehead pumpkins. I learned the name of it when I was up at Bricks. Carrie told me what it was. And I wanted to sit it in one of these uh, English urns that's part of my QVC collection, but I didn't want it to squish this gorgeous, perfect palleted uh, orange and yellow lantana that is just perfect for this time of year. Plus the monarchs are just they just love it as well. So I didn't want to squish it. So I just tucked a plant stand into the pot that elevates the pumpkin so you can see it from the street and it also keeps it from squishing my lantana. It looks like a really cool pumpkin finial. Now I also put a little bit of a shiny glaze on this and I'll show you how I did that. So from the street it really really stands out. So Stuart we want to make sure that we do a from the street view so people can kind of see what the front porch looks like in totality. And I love having my American flag out with all of my pumpkins because it seems very Americana. So let's move down a little bit. Stuart, be careful because this is one of my projects that I'm going to be working on pretty soon. These scented geraniums that I have in these planters right here are not cold hardy. So I'm going to take them out of this long rectangular concrete planter and I'm going to replace them with these wintergreen boxwoods. So I'm going to do that a little bit later when I'm ready to put those in the greenhouse. So these are just kind of lying in wait. But I also have some more really fun pumpkins that are here and they just kind of run up and down the porch. So immediately you get this jolt of orange and yellow and fall by looking towards my front door. Now, I also like to place a couple of them on my bench, um, kind of like pumpkin throw pillows, I guess. This is a really fun idea, you guys. If you've got any kind of tutor, whether it's metal or wood, I love being able to put, let me move this out a little bit, Stuart, so I can show you what I did. I loved this pear-shaped pumpkin. It was just, it was, about as perfect as can be. So I put a glaze of enamel on it. And then of course I've got a little uh, Jack B. Little Pumpkin here. If I put these and I was able to fit this, obviously I had to be selective about what would fit inside the confines of the metal at the top of this tutor. This one did fit, but it was too small and it would have just fallen through the circular portion of the two tour. So I just took an aged, uh, dirty wooden uh, tile, I should, woody looking, I should say, tile, put it in here as a platform, and then I could rest these pumpkins on top of them. I love the way they look. It's got a very, um, Oh, kind of a regal look to it, I think, with the finial on top. And definitely you can see it from the street. And that just jolt of perfect pumpkin is, I think, really pleasing and attractive to the eye. But where I really had fun playing with the pumpkins was probably in my window box area 
because the lantana in orange and yellow just made the perfect muse, the perfect inspiration for the gourds and pumpkins that I wanted to put in here. You'll notice that there's no white ones, there's no gray ones. It was strictly an orange and yellow tableau that I wanted to create here. So I've got them tucked into the base of this Eugenia topiary. And here's another question for you guys. I'm always asking your opinion on things. I've been struggling this year with, do I wanna cut off this bottom section and have it just be a standard Eugenia topiary or do I wanna leave it and have it two tiered? So that's just a question that I'm asking you. It's gonna be going into the greenhouse pretty soon anyway. But the lantana has just been spectacular. I didn't need to add any additional mums or asters or any other kind of fall flowers. I think that this is just dramatic and punctuational enough. So I just tucked in my gourds. You'll notice that I took some cuttings of some coleus and I tucked in a little bit more of that. This, by the way, you guys, this is my favorite pumpkin of this year. I love its shape, but mostly I love that stem, which by the way, when I bought it was still very fresh. So I gave it a little sheen. When it cools down a little bit more, I'll put one of my battery operated candles in one of my lanterns that was part of my QVC line. It's a little bit hot now and I'll wait till nightfall to do that. And then I'll make sure to illuminate it. Then I've got more of this golden coleus at the end and this bicolored purple and green coleus. I've got more lantana down here in this pot. And then I just, I, I just absolutely fell in love with these mammoth kale. I got these at Bricks also, and I just tucked them in their plastic pots. I just tucked them into these Kobo baskets that are also part of my QVC line and I don't have to worry about watering them because all of these things are waterproof. And these I think are gonna be absolutely gorgeous. And if the cabbage loppers don't get them or cabbage loopers, however you pronounce it, don't get them this fall, then hopefully they will continue to be beautiful until next spring. So that's kind of how I, I decked out this area. And let me show you a couple of tips that I do to make them more striking from the street to really beautifully capture the sunlight, the golden sunlight that's kind of low in the sky this time of year, and also to protect them a little bit. So, I bought most of my pumpkins, you guys, at Bricks. Which way do you want me to be, Stuart? Over right here, Stuart. right here, over here, over here. No, no, over here. Over here? Okay. I'm trying to see. I told you Stuart right bosses me around a lot. Over <laughs> here, over here. Does this work? Right okay. So I went to Trader Joe's, and in addition to all of the pumpkins I got at Bricks, I realized I needed more small pumpkins. So I went to Trader Joe's, and I got even more. A lot of them I'm using them inside. Some of them I'm using uh, in a project in the back, but let me show you my little trick. So what I like to do is take my pumpkins and a cardboard box, which looks bril works brilliantly on a windy day like today, because I don't have to worry so much about the wind spraying all of this enamel back at me. So I've got my unglazed pumpkins here, okay? And then I've got my partially glazed pumpkins here. And you can see that, can you see, Stuart, that one is shinier than the other? Okay, this one I just have a little bit of a sheen on. I don't coat the entire thing. I just give a spritz, typically to, oh, about the top two thirds of it so it will capture the light. And how I do that, is I just put them in a box. And by the way, you guys, look at this. Isn't this glorious? I love collecting huge leaves this time of year. And these should be really glistening, aren't they, Stuart? Can you really see these? These look beautiful inside with just a select few pumpkins or gourds sitting on top of them on your dining room table or in a living room vignette or something of that nature. I'll show you some of that later. So I try to get really large, generally for me they're sycamore leaves that are on my street. I like the ones that have some texture and some 
uh, folds to them, different gradations of green or brown. And I spray those, big ones and small ones, and I use these in all sorts of different ways. And the spray enamel serves to not only protect them, but it keeps them from drying out even more so they retain their color a little bit better once I bring them in. And I just give them a little spritz like that, the areas that I haven't already sprayed. But when I'm doing it in a box, I just get a, a, you know, a cardboard box, I put them in here. Make sure to shake your can really well. Now this happens to be a Rust-Oleum Triple Thick Glaze. And I'll put a link below to uh, oh, a different option. It doesn't matter what the brand is. And you can get it in varying degrees of sheen, whether it's really high gloss or kind of matte or satin, whatever your preference is. And then you just give it a good shake. And then I just spritz them. Sometimes what I'll do, is I'll even position them first, and then wherever the sun tends to glisten off of the top of the pumpkin, that's where I will spray. So for example, in here, I could go ahead and position this, and then just give a little spritz to the area that was capturing the sunlight. That way I don't spray the entire thing. Now, it protects them a little bit from squirrels not a lot from squirrels. <laughs> so what I do is this time of year when I'm, I'm not working so much in the garden on my daily rounds, I kind of check my pumpkins daily to see if they have any kind of squirrel damage. And if they do, if they have like a squirrel chew in them or something, then I will spray some of this in the little divot. And then sometimes I'll put some cayenne pepper or red pepper flakes in the divot and that kind of stops, it kind of like stops the encroachment and more chewing on that blemish on the pumpkin. It's kind of weird which ones they choose to gnaw on and which ones they don't. Um, but nevertheless, there's always some pumpkin damage. I've just come to expect it. Last year, I even found some of my little pumpkins that were on the roof of my garage where they took them up on top of the garage to dine. So that's just the way it is. Um, and it really kind of depends on the year, whether I have more or less squirrel damage. So that's kind of, that's kind of what I do. Some people say you can uh, sprinkle cayenne pepper or red pepper flakes, that works as a deterrent, or hair out of your hairbrush. I haven't found either of those to be very effective. You could also use some rodent repellent. It kind of works, but it smells horrific, so I don't particularly like to use that. Uh, you might try deer repellent. I basically just keep an eye on them and address the problems as they arrive. Or sometimes I'll just turn the chewed part to the back and the good part to the front and then compost them as they get really eaten up and destroyed. So those are just a couple of tips of what I'm doing in my, my front porch styling. I will show you some other Oh, little styling vignette tips for fall decor inside and out. I'll be pretty soon walking my neighborhood and stuffing my pockets with little foraged acorns and pine cones. Anything that I see that looks like it might be fodder for my spray enamel or that I want to use inside because I really like to use natural decor. But honestly, could anything be more beautiful than just one of these glistening leaves in all shades of mahogany. Hope that gives you guys some tips for a fall refresh for your front porch. Well, if you've held on this long for the fashion epilogue, that's great, and here it is. If not, just move on to the next 
video. So today's fashion epilogue is brought to you by, I guess, my sunglasses, which are Armani Exchange from Nordstrom Rack. Someone asked me how many pair of sunglasses I have, and I have many, many. It's a nice way to accessorize. Doesn't take up a lot of room, and it really can elevate and switch out the look that you have with sometimes the same clothing that you might wear over and over again. And another reason I have a lot of pair of them is quite frankly because I don't lose them very often, which is a good thing. I don't often give myself compliments, but I'll give myself that one. Um, my earrings are cinnabar drop earrings that I got from my sister Meg as a gift. My top, I love it because it segues beautifully from summer into fall because the colors is made well from last year. My jeans are also made well from last year. My shoes are Tom's. I love these. They're so comfortable and they don't get too hot because they are perforated. And my ensemble of bracelets are just from absolutely anywhere and everywhere. My ring came from a street fair actually in Santa Fe, I believe. It's either Santa Fe or Bermuda. One of the two. I can't remember which one. So there is my fashion ensemble for today.